It is the Oath on 106.3 The Buzz. Johnny Thrash joined by no, none other than Thomas Lindbergh of At The Gates. Uh, the band going to play Dallas Gas Monkey live Saturday, February 13th, along with Decapitated, The Haunted, and Harm's Way. Still out in support of At War With Reality, the big comeback album released back in 2014. Now, having had time to digest the album, I absolutely think it's one of your best. Now, do you personally, as a member of the band, uh, have a favorite, or you do, do you just kind of like them all the same? I guess all artists think their last album is the best one. I, everybody <laughs> said that's mm-hmm. different is a liar. <laughs> but uh, you're always, you know, closest to the one that you just did because that's the one that's, you know, how can you say it? It portrays yourself as a person that you are today, mostly, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, because every album is a part of yourself. And um, the same with this one. Uh, but, you know, what, what we wanted to do with this one was really trying to incorporate everything that it does against into one album. I guess, you know, uh, that comes across as well. I mean, all the melancholy, all the desperation, all the aggression and everything into one album. And I think that's what I'm most pleased with that we succeeded in doing. To me, um, and let me tell you, I, I've listened to a lot of death metal over the years. You and I are right close to, to the same age. I believe uh, uh, seeing on Encyclopedia Metallium, Metallium you were born in October of 72, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I was born in yeah. January 73. So we wow. we kind of came up on the same stuff. And I've listened to a lot of death metal over the years, but I don't believe I have ever heard a scarier opening track, you know, kind of set this really dark vibe than uh, uh, something I'm not even going to try to pronounce. It, it'll be embarrassing, but uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. It, it translates to the altar of the unknown God, if, if I'm correct. But, man, that is, that yeah. is one of the scariest intros. Uh, where did it come from? It is a quote from uh, an Argentinian writer uh, from the 60s, uh, uh, Ernesto Sabato, uh, which is also an inspiration for, for a lot of the um, lyric material on the record. Okay. Uh, he wrote some tunes is, is from one of his novels, for, for example. Uh, the Conspiracy of the Blind is a chapter of one of his books. Um, so I was, all these uh, South American writers just uh, inspired me this time around. And I just figured... When I read that novel, um, that that kind of page just stood out, and I, I just said to myself, "I need to use this sometime." Of course, I read it in Swedish, you know, the uh-huh. translation. Uh, but I, I think I figured rather than translating it into English, you know, that that would make kind of two translations for me. You know, uh-huh. let's use the original. We have a lot of Hispanic fans, that, you know, mm-hmm. people that talk Spanish that like like at the gate as well. They will, you know go nuts that we have a Spanish intro. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it kind of makes sense as well, because, I mean, I always like bands, you know, I, as you say, it's scary because you really don't, you get some words here and there, but you really don't understand everything. Uh-huh. That kind of vibe actually builds up even more than writing something on the nose of people. It's more abstract. It's more, yeah. I And an actual background um, kind of uh, atmosphere for the whole track is made by the same guy who did the intro for Blinded by Fear on Slow of the Soul. So it's the same, you know, the guy who did the noise thing uh-huh. in the background. It's the same guy who did the intro for oh. Blinded by Fear back in 95. So it's full circle. <laughs> it's the Oath on 106.3 The Buzz, Johnny Thrash along with Thomas Lindbergh at the gates. So now, uh, you know, I know it's only been a couple of years since At War With Reality, but I wouldn't be a true fan if I didn't put pressure on you, I mean, come on. Are we going to get another At The Gates record? Are you working, or is it still just, let's just let's enjoy this for a little while? Uh, it's more of the, of the second one there, actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is, we, we are so much, you know, enjoying this moment, as you say. We are very fortunate, and we know that we are very fortunate to be able to have such a second spring, whatever what you would call it, you know, mm-hmm. uh, to have an album uh, out that has been embraced by all the new fans alike. Uh, so much time being passed since you know the last one. It's it's overwhelming, and we just want to be here right now and not not think too much about the future. And, and you know when you think about it, uh, planning ahead, uh, giving in to pressure, <laughs> yeah, uh, from not, not from radio journalists but from from record companies or whatever. That's what you know broke up the band the last time. So okay, we we are. We really want this to last. That's why we take it easy and, and plan one step at a, at a time. You know, 
But I would love to make another record, of course, because it was such an enjoyable thing to do this one. So who knows, man? But we want to take it, you know, take it easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I'd always heard in time for a little uh, fact or fiction here, actually speaking to a, a Swedish resident. As an American, I had heard that when when Swedish artists were working on new material and didn't have time to do other jobs or whatever, that the government actually subsidizes musicians. Is that true? Well, no, not really like that. I mean, that's kind of what you'd call um, a half the shirt, <laughs> in a way. Okay. You could, you know, for what you would call study circles. Um, I don't know if you have something like that in, in, in the U.S., but it's like... Um, you meet, you know, different people. It doesn't have to be music. It could be, you know, knitting, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> right. whatever. Gotcha, so, okay. Uh, and you uh, get support, you know, from the government if you can prove uh, who was there, you know, and uh, that you did what you said you were going to do, if it's something cultural or whatever, you know. Uh, basically, a strategy to, to uh, keep kids off the streets, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. You know what? Uh, it, it, it has been proven successful, but even, even even so, you know, even Sweden is being more and more, you know, commercialized or, or capitalized, you know, uh-huh. uh, as, as every other country in the world. So that was more of the old uh, socialist government that, you know, had those things for, for the kids. It's getting worse, but I mean, you can still do it. You can still do it, but it's, it's, you know, it's harder. I bet. You know, and and speaking of hard times in Europe, it's it's hard to even here two months later not think about those those Paris terror attacks. Even you know we had San Bernardino a few weeks after that here in the U.S. and uh, e- even before that, there there was a, a very edgy feeling amongst everyone. You know, we're halfway across the world from you, but it still felt like that happened in our backyard. What's what's the yeah. climate like over there? Are people still real edgy, or is it kind of calming down a little bit? It is strange because you know. It's- now we have this refugee crisis here uh, in Europe right now. It's, it's really big, you know. Um, there's such a humanitarian crisis on so many levels. Mm-hmm. And then you have a lot of terrorist threats. You have Istanbul now, Jakarta just happened. Uh, the Somalia airport has been sieged. You know, I keep updating on everything because I'm not really, you know, I'm, I'm, I really want to know what's going on. And yeah, in a way, you get into this. It drains you, you know, in a way, you know, mm-hmm. it becomes almost like everyday life, this constant threat. And then, in a way, which is kind of weird. Yeah, it is. Stop thinking about, you know, being afraid because it's almost part of mm-hmm. everyday life. Understand. It, it is insane, isn't it? It is. It is. I mean, it, we've become so jaded over here in the U.S. I mean, it seems like every time you turn around, something, something like that's happening. You're getting some bad news. And it's like, and like you said, it's scary in that. Sometimes I'm not as scared as I was, say, after September 11th, you know? I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And I mean, and this is, you know, this is still the same thing, really. It's just yeah. different ways of doing it. It's, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, you, you had um, you had these terrorist things even in the 70s as well, if you, if you mm-hmm. remember that. It's like, uh, but it, it was, you know, I think everybody was more naive back in the days. Nowadays, it's, you know, the threat is real, you know? Yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's 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 tough. You know, man. Everybody says it like you, you don't want you know you're you gonna give in to the fear, but you know you, of course you know when you go into a, a concert hall or, or a theater or whatever now you look you look you you, you see where the exit is. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, man. Uh, crazy times. It's yeah. the oath here on 106.3 The Buzz, Johnny Thrash, and the great Thomas Lindbergh from At the Gates, and I feel like a terrible metalhead. For not knowing this until just recently, uh, I was <laughs> I was on uh, on Metal Archives and I read that you designed the Dark Throne logo. Is yeah, is is that true. correct? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is it you know knowing that you are into that sort of thing? I kind of I'm curious how important is album artwork and design to you when it comes to the full album experience? It's definitely very important. I mean. Of course, you know, I'm, I keep up with the modern, uh, you know, age as well. I, you know, I, I buy stuff off iTunes and go on Spotify and all that. You know, that's uh-huh. basically probably the easiest way for me to uh, enjoy music if I travel a lot, you know, to have it on the iPod or whatever, to have it on the phone. But, I mean, 
I also love the, an old school album. And when I when a band releases a record that I've been waiting for, you know, with one of my favorite bands, there's nothing better than you know to, to flip through an L- LP cover, you know, the big ones. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it takes me back to the to the old days, you know. And that's something, too, about At War With Reality. Everything surrounding the album, whether it's your videos that you're putting out behind it, they're all that really dark vibe. They have that same artwork, that same dark tone. It, it just fits the album. So it was pretty much, I, I knew I was asking a question that I, I, I thought I had the answer to. And yes, you, you confirmed that you're very much uh, into artwork and, and how that sets the vibe for the album, man. Yeah, definitely. And we wanted to make it a full experience for this album because we knew this this is going to be a special album for us. You know, it's not just another album. It, it is a comeback album after 19 years. We, we, we have to think through everything in detail. And, and to work with Costin, the guy who did our album cover, you know, he's a huge fan and he's also a friend and a, an artist that we really respect. And he wanted to make his, you know, his interpretation of the lyrics and the music. And, I mean, it was just fantastic to, to see him and respect so much. Uh, give so much effort into into what you were doing. You know, it's amazing. You know, now uh, we've been talking about At The Gates, but you stay very, very busy outside of out At The Gates. And I'm just kind of curious, what's coming up for you individually? Well, I mean, uh, right now I try to focus a lot on At The Gates uh, while, you know, because we really are um, kind of fortunate enough to be, be enjoying this, you know, uh, as I said before. And um, so... Until, you know, at least the end of the summer, it's almost 100% at the gates. Um, there are some projects that I'm working on you know, with, with other musicians, some that I'm very fortunate to work with, you know, that I haven't worked with before. I, I don't want to mention anything before, you know, it's closer to the re- release date. But there's some really interesting projects that I'm working on uh, and that I feel very, uh, you know, privileged to be part of. Um, but... Um, Next year, uh, I think there's going to be a little bit of a rebirth for for this year again. We we, we have uh, kind of stuff, established a new lineup and, and started working on some new material. But we also want to take it, you know, step by step and not rush into stuff. So there's new new stuff coming out there too. So it's it's exciting times. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is, man. I look forward to it, Thomas. Uh, at the gates, Gas Monkey live in Dallas. They're going to be there with Decapitated, The Haunted, and Harm's Way on Saturday, February 13th. If you haven't taken the time to listen to that War with Reality, you got to do it. One of the best albums I've heard in a long, long time. Thomas, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for your support. And Dallas, you know, be ready for it. We're, we're uh, ready for you.